Hello and welcome to the Homeless Consultant channel. My name is Paul B. I am the Homeless Consultant. And I'm not just kicking back here in my chair trying to look cool or anything like that. Actually, um, after all the thousands of dollars I've spent on this car, particularly to keep it running through the winters, the alternator went out. So I'm here inside of a dead car that cannot move out in the middle of nowhere without any way to do anything about it. So the chair stays where it is no matter how cold it gets tonight, which I believe is the low 40s, window stays open. There's no power in this car at all. It is dead. So it's going to be a cold one. I guess the only good news, though, is that, you know, I'm near enough to my workplace that I can get to work. I can't go get any food, so I have no food, but I can work. And the interesting thing is, when I told everybody at work my car's dead, I don't have any way to do anything other than just sit in the car. I can't even really do anything other than sit in the car anymore. I, I can't charge my computer because there's no power in the car, you see, so I can't do something with the computer or anything. I can't do anything but just sit in a car. And I have to sit in a car because my windows are open and I have no way to close them. And if I leave all my stuff in here and I go away, the stuff will be taken away. And I bet you a lot of money. I'll bet you a used alternator that the people who steal the stuff out of my car when I step away have a home. And yet, the claim is that it's the homeless people who are the problem. They're bad people. Stay away from them. Don't come near me. Don't ask for my... Don't ask me to help you. Because you're a bad person. Well, what about all those people at work who I told this to? Because not even one of them actually offered to help. As a matter of fact, what they kind of did was more or less uh, laugh quite a bit. It's very, very funny to them. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, who haven't been to Minnesota, that's what's called Minnesota Nice. You see, it's the opposite of nice, is what it is. It's, it's a lie. It's a myth. It's a carefully cultivated lie. All those people I work with, you know, I bet when they're out on the road, if, if they're just driving down the road and they get stopped at a light and someone who doesn't feel like working for a living holds up a sign over there, I bet you some of the people I work with, I'd almost guarantee you some of the people I work with would say, hey, come here. They pull out a few bucks and give it to this person who may actually have a home. Because if you weren't aware, a lot of those people who take those that money on the streets actually make more money than you do. And they have a home. And you look on YouTube, you'll see people followed from their street corners and watch where they go to their nice home sometimes. Not always. But the point is, rather than going to a job like I am, <clears throat> they're standing out there begging for money. The people I work with, a lot of them, I bet you, for whatever reason, out of feeling of guilt or not liking the person looking at them and feeling bad not giving money, or because they sincerely care and they want to help as they can, they'll give them some money. But me, somebody who they work with every single day, somebody who they can count on more than they can count on any other person in that place to get the job done right, they just laugh. The last one just left. <clears throat> I just saw him leaving down there. So I'm here by myself tonight. 
and I can't go anywhere and I can't do anything but sit in this car sit back at this particular angle because you see the seat is electric so I can't move the seat and again in case I didn't mention it the, the windows open which means I'm completely exposed <clears throat> to all of the wonderful housed Minnesotans who statistically commit about 99.99999 percent of the crimes out there not the homeless people so I'm now completely exposed to them and if I should dare do anything like say go to sleep for example do something that your body requires perhaps so that I can actually function at work tomorrow um, I basically put myself at great risk, certainly put my stuff at risk. Someone could have their hand in here and open this door before I even know what's going on. They could have, uh, I, I have absolutely no safety or security whatsoever, but it was pretty funny to the, the people I work with, the Minnesotans, uh, the Minnesotans, just wanted to make sure that was clear, who I work with, they thought it was pretty funny. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, Paul. Oh, man. That's going to suck. Oh, man. Well, hang in there. Have a good night. You know, <laughs> Try not to freeze to death. <laughs> Those are the people I've worked with for two years. If that's how much I can depend on them, is it any wonder that when I go to more than 100 Minnesota churches, they show me the door? Is it any wonder that when I go to Minnesota public officials, government people who are paid a salary, who accept a salary for doing a job, that they don't really feel like doing the job? You know, because it only helps a, a, another person, someone who is not them. Someone, someone other than them. So that person doesn't matter. It's par for the course. I've spent so much money on this car and given how much I have in my checking versus in savings I don't have enough money to fix this right now so I'm stuck here the nearest store where they sell food to my best knowledge is about I'd say three to four miles away up and down hills and if I go I have to leave everything I have in a car that, with the windows open just just leave it here for anyone to walk by and, and grab it that's if I want to go eat food for example so we'll see if I ever get to post this or not because um, I have to actually get the car running to do somewhere go somewhere do something before I could ever try to post this but I thought I'd at least document it fortunately I got I got some video of the engine at the very end, right before it gave up the ghost, so you can kind of hear what that sounded like. That's just exactly what a person who lives in their car wants to hear. Imagine if your home made that kind of a sound, or did something equivalent. How would you feel if that happened? Would you like it if everyone around you laughed about it and thought it was funny? Maybe you would. <laughs> Maybe you're a Minnesotan. Just thought I'd share this with you for what it's worth. I'm going to go back to, um, well, doing nothing, actually, <laughs> except sitting in a dead car. I hope you have a wonderful day at home.